we have experienced a lot of environmental contamination and also problems of people getting poisoned by the pesticides. Unfortunately, I would say at least about two people who passed away during the exercise. Since the dawn of time, humanity has engaged in activities that would lead to increased yields in produce for consumption and for trade. The release of waste from these activities has over time resulted in adverse impacts to human health and the environment. Following World War II, the manufacture and use of synthetic materials such as plastics, PCBs and inorganic pesticides like DDT surged, resulting in a significant rise in pollution. These materials are not only toxic, they are non-biodegradable. They are persistent and poisonous to ourselves and the environment. The demographic known as the poison poor, a population of upward of 200 million people directly affected by toxic chemicals from industry and mining, is now in the line of fire. This burden of deaths and diseases caused by pollution is borne by low-income families who are the least equipped to deal with this problem. My name is Kayemba Mathias. And where you are, you are on the farm of parents separating children and youth Uganda. And uh, this farm was established mainly to promote good agronomical practices, ranging from soil to crop care. So we used to spray here, but after spraying when it rains, the surface water flow would move down. And as it moves down into the swamp, we had a fish pond, and we would find all the fish have died and they are floating. Basically, before me knowing the impact, of the pesticide on my life, I realized it on the aquatic life that was down. Persistent organic pollutants, or POPs, are a group of mainly man-made chemicals that are non-degradable at the molecular level. This means that they persist in our air, water, and soil for decades. There are three broad types of POPs, those that are made and used in a variety of pesticides and agricultural products, those that are generated by industrial processes, and finally, those that are created by the large-scale burning of waste products. Through the food chain, the molecules of these harmful chemicals find their way into the fatty tissue of humans and wildlife, and have been proven to compromise their immune, neural, and endocrine systems, causing a wide variety of health problems and disease. They have been proved to cause a variety of cancers, birth defects, respiratory related problems, and may contribute to the rise of afflictions like kidney disease, diabetes, and high blood pressure. <laughs> Tufuna 
zitumeketa na yero gendo genda mudua liro baku gamba e vila gala laga vietu kozesa vietu chasovo la kwe wala ama angu dala kubanga vye vili uo eda vietu kozesa miya galo pele nse ngalime mabeli nasina ngalime ela mabeli agiti nana sadli standard salo mtu nga futa nje Fagalis, he half his spoon, look, less food. As in Fagal, a man of a man and a footsaga, Fagalums of a cool. As in your foot, as none foots are washed, I look like one. As none patting cook, sell it at Tingu, pull a mabed. They were footsy, the Tulagarauzi, Guta is not set tea. The tea la mabele, la nanomoons. The Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants was adopted on the 22nd of May 2001 and entered into force on the 17th of May 2004. Since then, numerous African countries have not only signed and ratified the agreement, but more so have begun the important step of domestication of the Convention's principles into their government's policies and legislative frameworks. The signing of the Stockholm Convention marked a, a milestone in the country's management of chemicals. First of all, prior to signing, there was a lot of knowledge build up and then understanding a problem, defining the situation, and then we understood that, yes, we, we have a little bit of problem here and we need to deal with it. And once the government, after understanding that problem, quantifying the problem, the government then moved and agreed to, to join into the Stockholm Convention and indeed in July 2005. So by the time the government had to sign the agreement, there was a lot of now knowledge build up and justification for government to join the international community in regulating this uh, uh, persistent organic pollutants. In particular, but also it awakened our capacity on chemicals in general. As a country, and as a Minister of Tourism and Environmental Affairs, through our public enterprise that is responsible and that is the competent authority on this particular issue of POPs, we started to develop the National Implementation Plan, which was developed in 2010, but was later revised in 2014 because there was discovery of new persistent organic pollutants. Besides putting in place laws and regulations, we also have engaged other stakeholders who have been actually in different sectors, that, as I said, they have been using these chemicals and try to educate them. So awareness rising. Uh, we went further for the, for the elimination, like uh, now we are working on the, on the PCB elimination. We have a project that is dealing with it, and in uh, a few days we will be eliminating these PCB-related chemicals. But at least you have also controlling any other importation with the PCB products. In 2015, there was a seminar different do the judiciary. Foi different from the seminar on chemicals, where we invited the sector private, NGOs, academia, universities, and the sector government, which are the ministers. Tá, foi um foi um centro de treinamento como como gerir como o, o produtos químicos de Moçambique dado que esse é, esse, esse é um mal que, 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 que provoca as pessoas provoca doenças até morte nas pessoas então foi um seminário que e foi contou com a participação do, do consultor um consultor internacional vem orientar como elaborar o, o seminário the process of finding out where the hopes are is more like inventory. This was done during the process of developing a national implementation plan. We had inventories of these chemicals in the different sectors. That information was collected and uh, reports written and compiled to make the national implementation plan. That was done in the very first NIP uh, in, in between 2006 and 2009. And then also when we were updating the NIP to take into consideration the new chemicals added to the list, we also did another inventory and also compiled and submitted to the Stockholm Convention Secretariat. Within the wisdom of the sector players, they guided that one, we needed to disaggregate various aspects along the value chain of agricultural chemicals and pesticides. They guided that now we need regulations 
on fertilizers as a separate legislation. We need a regulation on pesticides, registration and control as a, as a separate legislation. And we need a regulation on application equipment. The key aspect was to engage more and also the capacity that had been built. We started the drafting processes of these regulations. We undertook a training of agricultural extension officers, specifically just to educate and give capacity to them on how they need to guide and advise the farmers in the different areas of the country. We also did a specific training on the customs and the judiciary in terms of goods coming in and uh, being administered or being used in the country. So we did a focus group. Those are the focused kind of uh, trainings that we, we, we undertook. And we also uh, with the services and assistance of one of the NGOs in the country, I requested them to further do capacity buildings, specifically at the community level, grassroots level, teach the people in the rural areas on the impacts of popes to their livelihoods, how they can manage, how they can be used, and how it can be eventually uh, disposed of if, in the case, the facilities are in place. To achieve this, governments and international organizations partnered with NGOs and community-based organizations to provide vital training for farmers, sanitation workers, and vulnerable groups affected by POPs. My name is Adeline Mohewa. I'm the current uh, chairperson of Association of Uganda Professional Women in Agriculture and Environment. We work with communities at the grassroots. The communities hardly knew anything about POPs. And uh, even on the signing of the agreement, it was, there was very minimal popularization of what the convention was all about. And um, that is why AUPA ended up getting into the, the awareness raising bit of uh, the convention, following Article 10 of the convention, which recognizes the need for education and awareness programs, including ensuring that the public gets access up-to-date information on persistent organic pollutants. So it's Article 10 that uh, as people working with the communities that empowered the NGOs to come out and partner with government and other stakeholders in order to bring awareness on persistent organic pollutants. I so Fernando Zacarez Matavel. So technical professional of the district of Namaasha. Estamos a trabalhar nesse âmbito de produção agrícola e ajudar os produtores a, a, a saber como manusear os pesticidas. Antes do tornamento, a produção existia, mas a produtividade não existia. Então, havia mais doenças, havia mais, mais, mais infecções pulmonares, tossiam mais, enfim, tantas enfermidades existiam. Mas e agora? Depois dessa, desse treinamento, os produtores já vivem de uma forma sã e bem saudável, sem nenhum problema, porque eles já sabem usar o fato macaco, eles já sabem usar as máscaras, eles já sabem usar os óculos de, de, de proteção e por aí em diante, e mesmo o chapéu para proteção contra o sol. I'm Boniface Makubu, a retired civil servant, currently working for the Southern Environmental Management Association. I've seen farmers practically actually exposing themselves to chemicals unknowingly because they didn't have uh, an idea as to what chemicals can do to their health. In the past, there used to be chemicals called DDT, which was very effective in controlling pests, but farmers didn't know that DDT can easily kill them. So at least at the moment, the farmers are getting trained to become better people or better users of the chemicals that they use. But in the past, people used to use chemicals without having taken the, the proper precautions. Je m'appelle Bouhiga Samuel. Je suis le coordinateur national de l'organisation nationale appelée ACDEL en termes larges, signifie Action Communautaire pour le Développement Local. Le problème de l'environnement est global, mais Spécifiquement, nous avons visité différents centres, différents milliers. Nous avons trouvé beaucoup 
euh, des déchets qui sont remplis dans des euh, routes, des déchets qui sont dans les hôpitaux, des déchets qui sont dans les centres de santé, des déchets qui sont éparpillés dans des maisons. Alors, ces déchets-là constituent des dangers, un danger nuisible à la santé euh, de la personne humaine. Ces dangers constituent des maladies, des maladies transmissibles que nous rencontrons souvent dans la population vulnérable. C'est dans ce cadre-là que nous avons pu initier ce projet de collecter ces déchets qui sont éparpillés partout et les mettre dans, un, dans, dans des compostières pour les protéger et pour sauver l'environnement de cette personne humaine. Due to the efforts made by governments, international partners and NGOs, farmers, sanitary workers and affected groups are getting vital information on how to use, work and store pop-related chemicals. The key issues that we try to emphasize is that farmers should first of all identify the problem in their crops and then buy the correct uh, chemical in terms of either it is a fungicide, insecticide or herbicide. They must identify the problem, then get the correct chemical and then apply the chemical according to the, to the instructions on, on, on the label. Now, unfortunately, our farmers don't follow the label. And some of them didn't even know what the label contains. We try to teach them as to what the importance of the label, indicating that the color of the chemical label, like for instance, this is red, yellow, blue, and green. We try to explain that what do those colors mean so that the farmers, when they buy the chemicals, they, they must be in a position to know which, this chemical is either class one, class two, class three, or class four. And the importance of the pictograms on those chemicals, we try to explain as to what those pictograms, I mean, indicate. Like, for instance, you find the picture of a child trying to approach a locked cabinet. That was just something to tell the farmer that if you see such a, such a picture or picture on the chemical, the chemical must be kept away from children and pets. Depois de treinamento mudou porque desde que começar a usar esse equipamento já como já sei que tem que me prevenir. Eu nunca fui para o hospital. Naquele momento eu ficava doente sempre baixar pelo visar porque não sabia prevenir. Praga sempre entra uma gente tem que controlar esse manalimento sempre pelo visar porque ele sempre ataca mas sempre estou a controlar a, a pelo visar. Lumuniumuns, <laughs> No man, a bigger endly, less lala corner, velocta bango, the glum tan. Mobile on Vandal Tata, a natty at in a womb begging a man. No maggot loom floor, pay at a good as in the bees. Gansy so not a moon to eat the bull. The communities had very little information on pesticide use, on its safety, on its disposal, especially the containers that contain these uh, pesticides. Majority of them were used, uh, reused maybe in the kitchen. Uh, to, to store in salt or other, other commodities of household nature. And so they didn't know the dangers or the toxicity, the extent of toxicity of these chemicals. Nyalo says Funzile and Utum to be a ranch and most engine. Our beg la pagum can abandon a corner. O Kiela engine la power to corner, um, tell Tata Lapa, those seventy six cement pins will be set up, shall a corner. But we a yok sima or okuzimba a canya, muenteke bichupebio, nebi vera mwe jidde, bobu de wobu wunge ranga bantu wakende do kutambula, nante kamu mulironga and bikako, oksoboro kwe wala ovula be bulikwanaka wobu wo. Buli rose cupboard, or both no visible. Nains and Nafuno Muxan Naiga Erang and Nigiriza Navalla. Simu and Tubo Kanemu Masomero, together Zako Tambranga to Vaigiriza. Oburunji with Dagana Nobu Bukolachi, Oburidim.
Neste exato momento, nós estamos a trabalhar com provedores de insumos. Os provedores de insumos são aqueles que vendem esses mesmos insumos. Nós dissemos a esses provedores de insumos de tal forma que vendam os equipamentos. O que é que mudou pelo menos de uma hora para outra? É que os produtores, os mesmos produtores, há menos, há menos incidência de, 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 de doenças nesses mesmos produtores. Os mesmos produtores já não estão, já não estão suspensos a, a, a esses mesmos produtos tão tóxicos para, para poder lhes lhe, lhe tirar a vida ou estar, 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 estarem doentes em cada dia que mais passa que entra em contato com, 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 com os pesticidas. O que eu posso dizer que mudou? Mudou muito, sim, mudou muito, porque ele entra lá enquanto já está devidamente equipado no campo. The private sector can also be held accountable for the rise of restricted or banned pop related chemicals in Africa. Unscrupulous businessmen import these chemicals in bulk and repackage them as legitimate brands for sale to farmers through their existing networks of agrochemical stores. Compounding this problem is the availability of agrochemical products rejected by industrialized countries. To limit the adverse impacts on human health and the environment, African governments need to ensure that importers, distributors, transporters, and retailers of chemicals are handling these substances in a sound manner and in compliance with the best practice standards in safety and health. In any exercise, it is very important to empower the populace for them to contribute effectively, especially if you are dealing with a legislative framework, the populace have to understand what is it that is being legalized or what is it that is being domesticated in the country. So capacity building and public awareness is a key component that we cannot leave behind when we are dealing with such issues. The laws are made not to punish, they are made to regulate actions of the public. And the public of Uganda has been demanding a law to regulate use of chemicals in general, because people are, there was abuse, abuse of use of chemicals. So the general public demanded, and through this project, we have responded. There is a law that is coming, and that law is going to help the country deal with the issues of chemicals right from production, distribution, and use. You cannot fight on your own as a person, as individual country, as individual organization. It needs all of us to join efforts. And we should also consider that we are in the developing world that most of people are actually looking on their own personal interests. Some of these people are developing those technologies, but consciously knowing that these have some chemical that are not good for our human health and our environment. Let's move away from personal interests and go for the global interest. É um regulamento que nós temos que cumprir com as orientações que estão no regulamento. E, e nós podemos fazer isso acompanhando com as comunidades a implementação do regulamento. Esperamos que este, este ano seja aprovado pelo Conselho do Ministro. Ainda estamos em processo de avaliação ainda. O regulamento está em processo de, de elaboração. Provavelmente este ano vai se, vai -se aprovar o regulamento. De lá vamos fazer alguma monitoria do regulamento, sensibilização às comunidades, como estão a implementar o, o regulamento. Public awareness is a very key factor in terms of conscientizing people about the problems caused by chemicals. So if you can start from there, then at least people can be aware. So it means everybody has a role to play in terms of uh, making sure that even industry itself has to make sure that the people are aware as to what is happening within the industry so that people can be aware that the, the, how dangerous the, these things can be. <laughs> Mangabe Batanga Umut, a nomabo Tatagosa Bendis, a bang of beggy lacona, good lala banana cone, a good band real, Lautosa lacona, Baukie, Tikiata twang, Ibobo, Twangoba, Banpana, buying good, emptin, batata, badale, Kansas about the lac pega pega, maldana, less gang, cancer, but always a bayas. African countries have begun the important step of internalizing the Stockholm Convention by putting in place legislation, training, and awareness on exposure to POPs. With the use of chemicals set to increase in the future, it is important that all stakeholders remain vigilant and play their part in the fight against POPs exposure. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Gabonga.